Okay, traders, welcome to today's live analysis session I'm with me, Patrick Munnerly. If you can hear me and you can see the tick mill um, welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, could you type a Y in the chat box for me? Testing audio, one, two, three. Okay, thanks very much. Before we get going uh, with today's chart pack, let's just remind ourselves, obviously, with respect to um, today's content, uh, the views expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of uh, tick mill UK or tick mill Europe limited um, for we get going for those who are here for the first time a uh, brief introduction to myself my name is Patrick Munley uh, after I graduated from King's College London I joined a city PLC consulting firm after a couple of years learning the ropes <clears throat> I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure uh, financial hit to my personal capital. It was at this point uh, that, to, I guess, describe that as a gut-wrenching or, or sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back from what I was doing and um, just get rid of that. Um, I really had to stand back from what I was doing and consider whether or not it was feasible for me to, to actually make a living um, from the market. So I uh, took a look around and bear with me guys, sorry about this. Let me uh, just turn my phone off here. It's probably easier, there we go. Um, so, I, yeah, so I had to really step back and think, was it possible for me to make a living from markets? And I knew traders who were making a living, so I, Decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months, two years, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game um, in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suits my personality, uh, which I extensively back and forward tested and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin the strategy. Uh, but most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important watershed shift that occurred during that period was uh, moving from being a highly goal orientated individual focused on financial gains to really becoming a process orientated individual and so what does that actually mean well it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and attachments and that hellish roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, the performance data you can see on the screen is from 2013. Uh, that's since I have been managing um, investor capital through a managed account service, delivering, again, annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. 
I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content, a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, providing market and trade analysis on a, a daily basis. You can access that through their blog. You can sign up to receive these, uh, the daily outlook that I give and, uh, and a chart of the day or trade of the day that I'm watching an opportunity in the market. You can get those straight to your inbox uh, via the Tickmill blog. Uh, my other passion project is as head of trading and trader education, for a leading education uh, brand called fxcareerswap.com, offering development and funding to retail traders. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in you managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those interested, uh, you can get in touch with the guys at FX Career Swap. Uh, there's a telephone number there or an email. And uh, if you're looking for further information, the guys in London will be uh, more than happy to help you with that. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's, uh, let's jump into the charts. So um, first of all, let's revisit these weekly charts because we are teetering out or coming very close to some, some pretty uh, decent inflection points in, uh, in, in, in a bunch of these charts. So dollar index looking for a test of this 90 level. And from there, I would anticipate we see uh, a corrective pullback. Obviously, what, as discussed last week, we're initially targeting a, uh, an equality objective versus this structure here down into the 87.40 area. But like I say, looking for a pullback probably into 92.50 from, uh, from this 90 zone. Uh, we'll see how we trade when we, uh, when we, when we test there. Euro, one second, swing a little slowly. Uh, so the Euro dollar, looking for a test of this um, trend line at 123, I see the potential uh, for a pullback from that 123 area um, to basically retest the 120, the breakout point, uh, potentially as support. Obviously the target, the, the ultimate target for this move or the interim target is gonna be this 128.60 area. So any pullbacks uh, certainly was we trade above 116, are buying opportunities to trade towards this, uh, this 128 target in terms of the Euro dollar. Sterling, interesting, uh, Interesting chart here in terms of the weekly. You can see that we are testing again this major trend line resistance. Now we tested it last week and closed just right smack bang at the trend line. And, uh, and with all the Brexit uh, negotiations and discussions, etc., we're struggling to get a close. Well, at this point, we're struggling to get a close above it um, this week. So we'll obviously we'll have to see where we close um, tomorrow evening. But at the moment, uh, we're, we're, we're finding some resistance here at this trend line. It's the third touch of a, a major trend line running from the uh, 2007, 2008 highs in Sterling. So this is a, this is a pivotal test here. And obviously we have um, an extension in the Brexit negotiations running through now. They've suggested that Sunday evening is going to be the, the key point as to decide whether or not to proceed. Uh, very difficult to hold a position going into this weekend because you run um, significant gap risk. Because if, on, if for whatever reason on Sunday evening, the UK say, look, we're walking away from, uh, from the negotiations, we can't reach a deal here, then, um, then very quickly we could be back down trading 130 and 125 would be uh, key levels to watch on the downside with a no deal. However, if we do get a deal, then we can expect the opposite scenario where we gap higher and ultimately I'd be looking for a test of this 140 area as, um, as initial resistance. But I mean, that would just be the start of the move because as I discussed last week, um, versus this current structure here, whilst we hold 126.50 as support, then the, uh, the target, the equality objective, uh, equal legs, 147 on the upside. So plenty of scope in terms of st sterling upside. If we do get the deal and we take out this trend line, um, then we can, uh, we can be thinking about uh, much higher prices in terms of sterling. But again, just be careful with your sterling positions if you're intending to hold um, into this weekend. I would, uh, I'd be very, uh, be very careful indeed because there is significant gap risk um, in the market going into this weekend. Uh, Aussie. So 
So Ozzy is coming into a interesting area here now, looking at uh, 75.50s as some trend line, interim trend line resistance. Whilst we trade above 70, the target is now 89. We obviously have this major trend line coming in uh, in around 82. So again, above 70, pullbacks are to be are to be look, you look to add. Uh, to long positions or initiate long positions on pullbacks. When we look at the daily time frame, I'll show you where I'll be watching uh, for opportunities there. But initially, watch uh, watch for this trend line resistance, 7560 area. I would anticipate we see uh, see a bit of a pullback from there. Kiwi. So the Kiwi is uh, it's got an interesting, well, potentially interesting chart pattern here. Um, depending upon how we close tomorrow, certainly if we close back down, uh, let's say 70, 20 area, then we'd, uh, we'd be looking at these, this tweezer top here as, uh, as the potential to pull back and we could easily test this uh, 68 area as support. But again, whilst we trade above 70, uh, 65, sorry, uh, then the target for this Kiwi move is up at 78. So this is just an interim pullback. Uh, and again, we'll be looking on the daily charts at areas where we can look to initiate long positions if we do hold this 70 area as resistance. If we take it out on the closing basis, then the next area of interest is going to be the 72 level on the upside. But again, targets are 78 whilst we trade above 65. Euro yen. Again, sitting at trend line resistance, didn't get a close above it last week. Uh, looked like we could close above it this week. And whilst we hold 121, then we uh, we certainly want to be thinking about this ascending trend line, projected ascending trend line resistance 128.74 into the major trend line from the highs 131. And then we have this 134 equality objective versus this swing low here at the 121 area. A bunch of these yens are in quite interesting position. The Aussie yen. Um, looking for the Aussie yen now to test uh, projected ascending trend line resistance here at the 79.23 area. I think we could see a pullback from there. But again, whilst we trade above 73 now, our equality objective is 91 and we've got that major trend line resistance coming in. And you can see we're potentially in a breakout here above it, the, the Aussie yen trend line resistance. It uh, would take quite a reverse at this stage to, to get back below that. So uh, whilst we hold at current levels or above, we look for a test of the 7920s for a potential pullback. Maybe we retest the trend line, uh, trend line resistance to act as trend line support, uh, igniting the next leg higher. CAD yen. CAD yen's at a very interesting level. Again, um, from its major trend line resistance, we closed right at it last week. We popped higher here, but note we're trading right at the yearly pivot at the moment in terms of the CAD yen. And um, if, we, if we do get a rejection from here, then, uh, then we could anticipate a pullback, certainly back into the 80 area, and maybe ascending trend line support at 79. But whilst we trade above 77, our upside objective is equal legs initially at 85.70. S&P 500 holding the uh, potential broadening top pattern here. Uh, we'll have to see where we close, uh, potentially another rejection. You can see this uh, more clearly on the daily chart that we'll look at in a minute. Crude oil. Uh, looking for 49.50s as, um, as the initial upside objective uh, for this current pattern. Again, I'll show you on the daily time frame uh, how that sets up. But look for 49.50s to be an area where we can see a pullback in crude, probably retest this 43 zone as support. But again, whilst we hold 33, we have major trend line resistance, uh, sorry, prior trend line support now to act initially as resistance at the 53 level. We then have the major trend line resistance coming at 63 on route to that 77 target and those prior highs into the back end of, uh, of 2018. Let's check in with gold. So gold pulling back, um, looking for, a, I'm personally looking for a test of 1740 on the downside uh, before I think we can set up for the next leg higher in terms of gold. Again, we'll look on the, uh, the daily chart in a minute. Silver. Whilst we hold 26 as resistance, there's a potential to pull back into this 1719 zone uh, before the next opportunity on the long side in terms of silver. I do know we got a decent um, bullish reversal last week, no follow through at the moment. But if we do get follow through and take out uh, this 
25 area, then we could uh, we could easily anticipate high, a move higher to begin here in silver from current levels. And um, if, again, if we think in terms of equal legs, just draw this in. So whilst we hold uh, the 21 handle as support, then we would have uh, initial upside objective at 39.82 in silver. So uh, some punchy upside targets there. If uh, if we hold the 21, uh, we need to, uh, realistically we need to break 26 to uh, set sights on that target. Initially, obviously we'd look for the retest of prior highs uh, at the 29.60 area on route to that 39. Copper, very interesting. Copper is actually sitting right at, it's tested its yearly R3, shows you the strength of the move. We basically ran down, tested the yearly S3, and now we're back up uh, through the yearly pivot and we're testing the R3. I think we can see some resistance here in copper and I'll show you the daily chart in a minute. Note the some significant divergence here in terms of copper. We've got divergence on a bunch of these charts at the moment. So this is, uh, it's a time to be careful in terms of, uh, in terms of upside objectives, you can see the divergence developing um, on a bunch of those. So pay attention if you're tracking these weekly charts to that divergence as we head into some of these pivotal areas. Right, let's check in with the daily pack here, um, showing some potential wave counts. So whilst we hold uh, 9040, there's the chance with the dollar here that we get a, a push up into uh, 9166. Expect that to act as resistance for a move down into this 90 target as our, um, our interim five wave completion. And then, like I say, I think we can get a move back up into the 92, 92, 50 area, potentially even 93 here, sending trend line resistance before we uh, make that lunge for the 87 downside objective. Really, um, to, to suggest that this, the, the, the current cycle has completed, we'd have to take out 94.75 on a closing basis. Euro, uh, whilst we trade above 120, um, I'm looking for this 123 test. From there, I'll certainly be looking on, uh, on intraday timeframes and, uh, and, and for daily reversals as well. From this 123, this major ascending third test of this trend line resistance, I think there we get the pullback into the 120 support, especially if that comes uh, as we head into the back end of the year. We know that January historically is a very, uh, is a seasonally a very strong period uh, for the US dollar. So if that 123 test shows up into the back end of um, back end of this year, then uh, that's certainly a, an opportunity I'm going to be paying attention to. But regardless, even when, you know, even into, uh, into the mid to late December periods, watch this 123, I think it's going to be pivotal. Sterling, whilst we hold uh, 132 as support, then we can anticipate 139 is the upside objective. And we have that ascending trend line resistance coming at 141. Um, if we take out the 131, then I think we get a test of, uh, of 130, below 130, and we'd have, uh, we'd have bigger problems in terms of sterling. So again, going into this weekend, it's very difficult to position. It's, you know, you really are uh, taking a punt. Um, obviously, the, the party line from both the EU and the UK is that they want to make a deal happen, but uh, you've just got to be careful with the significant gap risk uh, both sides of the market in terms of sterling. Dollar yen. Uh, whilst we trade below 105, I'm looking for 101.20 as the next downside objective. Certainly watch if we get into this 105 area, bearish reversal patterns, I think, are a, a shorting opportunity in terms of dollar yen. Aussie, the wave five objective versus this wave four low at 69.69 is the 77 level. Trade was at the moment. Pay attention today, especially as we test uh, this ascending trend line with a bit of a wedge here. We could easily get a pullback into the 72 zone um, from uh, a rejection here. It doesn't, obviously, we, we, until we see the close tonight, we don't know how that's going to play out. But um, certainly watch as we trade that 77 area, 78, because I think various reversal patterns there will be an opportunity to do something um, on the short side for uh, to certainly play for a correction in terms of the Aussie. Um, and like I say, depending upon how we close today, a move back through 74, uh, we'll put in a, a tweezer top pattern in terms of the Aussie and have us back down into 72 before setting up for the next leg higher. Uh, but like I said, we break to the top side and then watch this 77, 78 area. I think that's 
an opportunity to do something to play for a correction. Uh, key, uh, Swissy, sorry, still sitting on this trend line support. Um, I've got an order in to, to go long here through these prior highs in around 89.15, 89.20, but nothing happening at the moment. And, uh, and whilst we hold below there, there's risk, further risk to, that we break lower here, and maybe test 88 to the downside before uh, seeing a correction. Looney uh, didn't even get up, get to, didn't have the strength really to recover for that, uh, that potential um, wave four test here. So we're just grinding lower. So as we do grind lower here, even if we get now into that um, 126 uh, equality objective versus uh, the wave one structure here, I'd be very careful about getting too excited on the long side because it would appear to me that uh, we will have to uh, see uh, Certainly, well, if we do recover, watch for a double bottom retest or a failed fifth wave type scenario here. But uh, 126 is going to be pivotal for this uh, for this looning. And that coincides with the Aussie, obviously, at the 77, 78 area. Kiwi, looking, uh, looking for the 72 test here in terms of the Kiwi. Uh, we've got, again, a bunch of, watch this momentum diversion. Uh, sorry, momentum divergence even uh, on all a bunch of these charts uh, because that will be addressed and especially so as we trade in some of these pivotal levels gold uh daily reversal yesterday but holding the pivot here like i say i'm looking for 1740 to really get excited on the long side um but if we take out uh, the 1785 area then we can anticipate trend line resistance at 1930 as the next upside objective in gold s and whilst we hold this uh, trend line support comes in today at 36.19, we hold there, as most of you will be aware, I'm looking for this 37.30 as, uh, as a pivotal test. We have fallen out of a wedge here. I'll show you on another chart much more clearly now uh, in a second. But yeah, while we hold 36.20, we're looking for 37.30 for then seeing a potential uh, correction. So, okay, so in terms of just the, the vanilla charts give you a, a, a better view on things, like I say, um, dollar index, pivotal, well, has to, it would have to break out of the channel resistance at 91.20 to even get back up to this 92 area. Um, at this point, we're holding, and like I say, the 90 is the, is the downside objective. Do note, though, that we do have um, momentum divergence developing here. Uh, the S&P, that wedge that I just mentioned, we've come out of it. And if we get a, uh, a break through that 36 support zone, then uh, we could be trading lower quite quickly here in terms of the S&P. So pay attention to these wedges. There are a bunch of them at the moment that I'm tracking. And, um, and if we do start to get some follow through, then uh, we can look at, uh, at corrections underway, really. Certainly another one here in the NASDAQ, trying to uh, break lower here through the weekly pivots. If we do trade lower, take out weekly projected range support, 12,135. Then we're looking at 11,900 as the next support area. Euro. Yeah, whilst we hold uh, 120, we're looking for that 123. Let's just remove that. Uh, Euro yen. So again, another wedge developing here, potential for a breakout. If we can get through 127, we could uh, we could see mean, meaningfully higher here in terms of Euro Yen. So watching this close today, there's a, a potential momentum set up uh, on the upside if, uh, if we can get going here, but watch the resistance at 127 uh, as potentially pivotal. Sterling Swiss was, uh, was a setup I was watching earlier in the week. Uh, we're sitting right at this major trend line where at the moment we, we if we close today at or below current levels, then that, uh, that setup will be invalidated. I'll cancel that. The Aussie, like I say, in the wedge here, we'll have to see how we close in terms of the Aussie um, tonight uh, to see if there is, uh, is an opportunity for a correction to play down into this 72 area. Aussie, yeah, and I posted this on the uh, chart, today, uh, on the blog today for Tickmill. We're sitting right at this pivotal resistance would need to get a close below the trend line support but if we did for whatever reason uh we've you know we've got a bunch of time we've got european uh, the new york session we've got uh, lagarde speaking shortly 
any again there is the potential for a pullback if we take out that trend line support and we'd be looking at 75 and 74 as uh, areas to uh, reload in terms of the long side aussie swiss has uh, looks like a pretty nice break potential breakout opportunity here i'm going to watch where we're closing this aussie swiss uh, we could be looking for longs here, certainly to get back up into 67.20 through there, and we'd have uh, we'd have quite a nice breakout uh, potential on our hands there. So watch these closes on the Aussie Swiss. I think we've got a similar story here in the Aussie CAD. Aussie CAD, I, to get excited about this, we'd have to close right out or just above this sending trendline resistance to set up uh, an expansion to the upside. Aussie Kiwi, watch the trend line here at the 107. That could uh, could bring an end to uh, to this upside move, and yeah, the kiwi so rejected here at uh, at this trend line. So if we get follow through to the downside um, in this Aussie in this kiwi through the seventy level, we can look for a test of sixty eight before uh, looking to reload on the long side. Kiwi yen. This has potential for a breakout here. If we if we can close uh, back towards or we take out those yesterday's highs at the 73.90, I think that's got uh, got great potential on the upside in terms of the Kiwi Yen. So this could be a breakout trade. Uh, we've got the um, RSI Stochastic just setting up as well. So watch these. Watch the close on the Kiwi Yen. There could be uh, could be a breakout coming there. Similar story in the Swiss Yen. Uh, we don't have the, the momentum doesn't really favor it as much. So uh, what I'm watching with the Swiss Yen actually is the potential. If we get back down through 117, I think we have a, a potential short. Obviously, at the moment, we're, we're nowhere near there, uh, 1760. But see what the afternoon session brings. And if we did get a reversal for whatever reason, I would certainly look at that on the short side. <coughs> and similar story in the, uh, the CAD Yen, just talked about this. So sitting right at the resistance zone here so that we want to see how price responds here there's a potential for a corrective move back into 79 before higher or we break out and we start to really grind it out to the upside and um and we could certainly be thinking about a move back into test this 84 area as uh, as a, an interim upside objective versus the breakout from this resistance zone cad swiss also similar type of setup uh, we're sitting right at the trend line resistance again. I've, uh, I've tried this a few times, this CAD Swiss. It's been pretty frustrating, but uh, I'll be watching tonight. If we can close at or above current levels through the, uh, the monthly pivot, then uh, we'll, I'll be looking for longs in the CAD Swiss to retest trend line resistance at 70, but through there on a breakout. In terms of targets, then again, what I'll be looking at will be initially equal legs, so we get 71.26, which is also the R3, uh, weekly R3. So keep an eye on that CAD Swiss. Uh, copper. Looking for copper to test uh, 366 on the upside. Um, we know we're sitting right at the, uh, the yearly R3. Uh, so any punch up into this 366 area, watch for reversal patterns. I think we can see a, uh, certainly a decent correction in terms of copper. Um, into that area. And that would also take with it the Aussie and the Kiwi, as those pairs are, are pretty well cor correlated, sorry, um, with, the, uh, with, the, with copper. Um, so that really, that's, those are the charts that I'm watching, the, the potential areas of interest for me, the setups, um, keeping an eye on the momentum divergence, uh, and obviously some potential momentum breakout setups as well. Um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Kiwi Cat, Kiwi Cat. Let's see. So yeah, the Kiwi Cat reverse from that um, that area that I'd highlighted. I'd highlighted this in a uh, in a piece on the, the Ticknell blog. And we're now potentially coming into um, what could be a support area here at, uh, at this eighty nine eighty area. If we take out the eighty nine eighty, if we if we do break lower here. Then, uh, then the target on the downside is going to be the ascending trend line support at 87.80. But again, get in there, certainly want to watch for uh, potential to, uh, to reload on the long side. But looks pretty bearish at the moment for an extension lower um, back into 
these prior highs here, 8933, and then like I say, sending trend line support, 8780. Uh, uh, ben, would you ever recommend trading interest rate news? And if so, uh, I, I don't recommend trading news. Um, what, I, what I do know, if you are, if, you know, if, it, if, if that is the thing that you're going to do, what you should watch for um, is there's a, there's a, a quite a well-known pattern in terms of a three swing uh, market reaction. What we tend to do in the markets uh, around big uh, data releases <coughs> is stops either side of the current level tend to get cleared. So if we if the if the if the news is released and prices move higher, um, first move tends to be wrong. So they they tend to you know they'll spike in the, if, if for example for whatever reason prices spike higher, take out stops above the market. More often than not, then what will happen is because of that the liquidity being sucked out so quickly will tend then to drop lower and gun the stops below the market before you get the direction, the, the genuine directional move. Equally, if, if we spike lower after the data release, what you'll tend to find is that we'll then pop higher to find liquidity for the directional move lower. So what, should, what tends to be the case is that the first move uh, tends to be the wrong one. And then the, the, the market, by the nature of seeking liquidity, tends to flip to the other side, attract the liquidity, and then move in the original direction uh, for the directional move. Does that make sense, Ben? Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, good stuff. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here and then um, Next week, next Thursday is uh, is going to be my last uh, last webinar of 2020, um, and then I'll be back the first week of January. Uh, ben, so, yep, far away, Ben. <coughs> uh, okay. Hi, Ben. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Thanks very much. How are you doing? Very good indeed, mate. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm good as well. Thank you. Um, Patrick, it's, uh, I've got a few trades on. Yeah. I'm looking to lock some profits on various trades. So I've got uh, CAD Japan and I've got Aussie USD and Aussie JPY. So I'm looking to, risk came off, I think, beginning of the week. So now I'm looking to lock profits. But what I don't want to do is lock in too much and then it bounces back. So I'm looking on the hourly. Just okay. to look for a potential rollover. Usually, I would just move it one times. Just so each time it moves one times risk, I take the take it off and then trail the stops. But because it's so volatile, like yesterday, yeah. all my trades went up to two hundred and thirty quid. Yeah, and then it came down to four. Then it went back, and it's sort of currently on sixty. Yeah. So I thought, right, I probably should have locked some profit, but. I don't want to lock too much and then it bounces and takes me out then to watch it go all the way to the top. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you know, in the Aussie, a good tactic in this volatility. It, it, I mean, in the Aussie, for example, at the moment, really the, you know, I, I, someone asked me about this and I sent them this chart. So the Aussie at the moment, the bull bear, you know, the, the area where this thing would start to go bearish again is really, is back below 74.20. Yeah. You know, at the moment, you've got the, this interim ascending trend line support coming in, um, <coughs> seventy-four fifty-five uh, is the next next support area. You know, we are coming into some resistance here at the figure seventy-five, and we have got um, some potential divergence here. But whilst we trade above, certainly above seventy-four fifty and really seventy-four twenty, then you know the the, the upside is favoured. Yeah, because I got it. What did I get in? I got in at 74,168. 74,116? Uh, uh, yeah, 74,016 I got in. Yeah, I mean, so... You, yeah. So I I'm kind of thinking I should lock some profit, but I don't want to lock too much, and then it bounces back, takes me out, and then it goes flying off to the top, you know? 
So, I mean, well, the, the, at this juncture, you know, we're holding above these prior highs. We've got this little pullback, we've popped higher. We are now coming into resistance and we have got yeah. divergence. We obviously got Lagarde about to speak. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that can make things volatile. But if you're thinking in purely from a structural perspective, then this trend line you could use or you could use the interim trend line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good show. Okay. I'll trail those to uh, to keep you on the right side. But again, you mm. know, on the hourly time frame, it's still bullish whilst it's above the the daily VWAP, which is seventy four thirty four. Yeah, because I'm looking at the RSI as well, which looks like it's about to roll, yeah. or ju or just to a, a small correction on the hourly. So mm. I'm just thinking how far, well, I mean, how much breathing space do I give? So yeah, I'll use those trend lines like you say. You can use the trend lines, you can use the symmetry swing, you know, depending upon where we top out. You can use mm. that uh, to give you, you know, the, the, so that's basically tell you what, what the, the scope or potential scale of a pullback is in terms of uh, current market moves. Yeah, or the Fib retracement, actually, wouldn't it? That would would yeah. that be going down? Well, I mean, what I, t I, would, I prefer the symmetry swing because, you know, th this is the last decline. So you at mm. least have to exceed that before you could get bearish on, on the price action. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. It does, yeah. So I go on the hourly then. Um, I do have the trade plan where, you know, but I obviously need to add when it's very volatile. I need to sure. figure, out, figure out a bit more for my trade plan on that because at the minute it's more lower volatility. Well, so this is one thing, time, one time, so yeah. When it's like this, yeah, it's obviously, yeah, but I'm just watching it. It's just going up and up and up now anyway, isn't it? So. It is. Okay, I will get onto the charts and Patrick, I'll do some uh, trend lines and I'll go from there. That's great. Thanks for your Thanks advice. Well. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. Uh, Alex, do the new daily candles enter the chart at 10 p.m. GMT? If so, is that the time for all pairs? Uh, 10 p.m. Is, is the time, Alex, uh, for all major FX pairs. What you'll find though is that, you know, depending on your broker, the spreads will go quite a bit wider than the normal at, at, at between 10 and 10.30 or 10 and 11, depending upon your broker. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wrap this one up here and like I say, uh, next week will be our, our last session of 2020. Um, I'm already starting again uh, the first week. Uh, I put one in the Q&A. Sorry, I missed it. Do you see Euro, uh, Euro Yen reaching the 27 area? Um, so yeah, the Euro Yen, uh, let, me, let me go somewhere here. Uh, for no, this one. Euro yen. I'm looking for this scenario. So as we hold this trend line, I'm looking for 27, uh, just above 27. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I've got there. And then I think we, you know we may see a pullback there. We've got some pretty decent divergence developing. So I'd certainly be interested, you know, we've got um, weekly R3 coming in there. I'm sorry, daily R3 coming in. So any, this 27.15, uh, I would anticipate at least a, a, a corrected pullback, certainly get back into that 126.50, but we could extend lower. Um, we've also got uh, predicted weekly and monthly range resistance 27.76. Any other questions? Uh, what happened? Gold, USD, some correlate, and Aussie sometimes. Yeah, I mean, correlations are great until they're not. Um, Guyana, I, uh, I don't, I, you, you're better off when you're, you're starting out just trading each chart on its, uh, on its merit as opposed to, to looking at correlations. Gold and the dollar can, and there have been numerous occasions where they both go up together and go down together. So uh, I wouldn't get too caught up in terms of the correlations. You're better off focusing on the price action on the chart. Strange, I don't know Ben. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm going to wrap this up here. Thanks very much for your time, and I hope this helps.